What is up guys, Mr. Rasmussen here. Today we're going to be learning how to use an online 3D modeling software called Onshape. It's going to be awesome. Onshape is super useful, super fun, um, has a ton of awesome features. So get ready to follow along. Make sure you pause when something doesn't make sense. Go back, check your own progress. Make sure you do each step perfectly. Guys, this is the trick to being able to do this. Do each step perfectly before moving on to the next step. If this step's not perfect, don't move on to the next step. You'll have to go back in the video until you have your step absolutely correct. And then you'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right. So to do this, we're going to want to open up a Google Chrome, an internet browser. For us, it's going to be jordandistrict.onshape.com. Go ahead and open this up. You should already have access to Onshape. Go ahead and go to Documents. Here on Documents, I can see all my recent projects. And then once here on Documents, we're going to want to go over to Create. Go to Create Document. And we're going to want to give this a title. So go ahead and give this a title. For me, it's going to be Video Demo. Or, yeah, let's do Video Underscore Demo. And then make sure that you put your name in the title. So I'm going to do JRAS. Create. Okay, now we're here on Onshape. This is our work plane, this is our workspace. A couple things to notice. We have some planes here. You, also, you will want to use a mouse while you're doing this. Don't try to use the trackpad. The mouse is way easier. Okay, so a few things to notice. If I scroll on the scroll wheel, I will zoom in on wherever my cursor is. Okay, so if I put my cursor on the origin, I will zoom on that point and zoom in and out. If you hold down the scroll wheel, this is pan. This means I can move left, right, up, and down. If I right click, I can orbit. Ooh, awesome, right? Okay, so these are all ways to change our view. You'll also see that this cube is moving as I'm orbiting right here. I can also click right here, right. That means it'll take me to the right side view. I can click top. I can click this corner. It'll take me to this view. These corners go ahead and mess around with these views. Go ahead and figure out how to navigate on shape as far as the view goes. You can also click this, this cube right here. Click this drop-down menu. Isometric, diametric, and trimetric are all different 3D views. So these are good places to go if you ever get just completely lost. If I get completely lost over here and I'm like, I don't even know where to zoom to, just go to isometric. Oh, it'll take me back right here. How about trimetric? I think that one looks best for what we're going to want to do. Okay, so now we know how to change our view in Onshape. Let's learn how to create something. Um, so, we're going to want to start sketching. We're going to think about which plane we want to sketch on. For us, it's going to be the top plane. So, I don't care about front or right right now. So, I'm going to right click on the front plane and I'm going to click hide. I'm going to right click on the right plane and I'm going to click hide as well. Now I'm left with the top view. Now we're ready to start, start drawing, start creating. It's going to be great. So go ahead and click sketch. And then it's telling us select a sketch plane. So if we had front and right right now, we could select those. Right now we only have top. Top's our only option. We are selecting where we want to draw this sketch. Once we have other shapes drawn on here, we're going to be able to select other places to draw this sketch. Right now, we just have one option. Okay, I selected the top view to start my sketch. I can right-click right here, and I can say View Normal to Sketch Plane. The, right here is what I clicked, View Normal to Sketch Plane. That takes us right to the top view. That's viewing this right at the angle that we want to be at. So whenever you're lost or your view's just all messed up, do normal View Normal to. All right. But we're ready to rock and roll. Let's go over here to the rectangle tool. We're going to want not the corner rectangle, but the center point rectangle. With the center point rectangle, we're, let's click on the origin and then start dragging out. So notice as I drag, the numbers are changing. That's the dimensions. I can go ahead and just click. Okay. I clicked, and then I didn't click again. My hands are up in the air. Okay. Go ahead and type 3 and then click enter. 
I don't even need to select this box. If I select, if I click and drag again, it's going to start dragging and start trying to draw another box. I don't want that. I want to define what this box is. So when I click, drag, and click, notice how this box, it just highlighted, it's asking me, hey, what size do you want this box to be? I'm going to click three on my keyboard and press enter. Oh, it automatically goes to the side. Let's go two and press enter. Awesome. Notice a few other things. Now these sides are black. Before, let's go back, they're blue. Because I can still click and drag. And these uh, sides I can still manipulate, this, the actual size of them. Once I define what the size is, the sides turn black. And that means that we are done editing the size of this shape. This shape can no longer change in size. Um, that size is set, okay? Another way to set the size, come up here to dimension or just click D on your keyboard. Dimension, I can click this side, click again, press three, press enter. Now we wanna do this side, go ahead and click right here and click two and enter. All right, now we have our perfect rectangle, beautiful. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And let's go ahead and add a circle. Let's add a circle right here. So notice if I, right here's the origin. And we'll remember that we drew this rectangle right on the center of this origin. So as I move over, notice how this line is right underneath my cursor. That's saying I'm parallel with the origin. Let's remain parallel with the origin. Let's go ahead and click and drag and create this. Oh, it's asking me, hey, how big do you want this circle to be? We could type 0.5 and press enter. We could do something else. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change that, though. If I click the outside right here, it's saying, hey, what do you want the, the diameter to be? I'm going to say 1. Oh, no, it's saying sketch can't be solved because you already defined it as 0.5 right here, and you're trying to define it as 1 right here. Hey, those numbers don't match. So what it wants me to do is change this size to 1. If I want to change, Change it on this dimension right here. Don't worry about this guy. I'm going to go ahead and delete the, delete him because I only need one. That's telling me what to do. All right. I have my circle. Let's use dimension tool. From the center of this circle to this spot right here, I clicked, and then I click right here, and now I get something telling me the size. Let's do uh, 0.75. Enter. Awesome. Super duper, super duper cool. Okay, next, we have a circle, we have a rectangle. Let's do extrude. Extrude's gonna give this shape some thickness. Right now it has zero thickness. This is only a 2D shape right now. Let's go over to extrude, which is gonna give this some 3D mass. Okay, notice a few things. It's extruding one inch. Notice the circle is extruded out of here. Notice I can click this arrow and drag. That number changes. All right, isn't it super cool? Let's go ahead and type right here on depth. Let's type 0.5 and then click enter. And let's go back to normal two view. Maybe a little bit 3D. And let's go check mark. All right, we have this this shape, whatever this, I'm not really sure what this is, but it's, well, but we've got it. Okay. Next thing, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to sketch again. It's wanting us to select a sketch plane. Let's click the top of this rectangle. Notice this sketch will be on top of the rectangle. I'm not on the top plane anymore. I'm on this plane. Okay. Let's view normal two. Okay, we are going to grab a rectangle, but this time let's do corner rectangle. Most of the time, corner rectangle is going to be what we're going to want for this class. Let's do corner rectangle. Notice when I hover over this edge, it highlights. That means that that edge will be coincident. It will be automatically matched, paired to that edge forever. So if I click and drag, and then I bring it down here and make it coincident with this edge. Notice how these, these uh, the top and bottom of this rectangle are black. That means they're defined. They can't change. They are coincident with that edge. Okay, 
Let's change the width to, let's do 0.4. And the height is already set because we can't change that. That's already, was it, two inches from here to here? Let's, we, I want to define the center of this rectangle to be exactly, let's do 0.5 inches from this edge. So to do this, I'm going to want to draw a line. This line, though, I need to be a construction line. So I clicked line, now go over to construction, and click construction as well. Now this line is just a reference line. It's not actually a legit line, okay? Notice a few things. On this rectangle, when I start, uh, when I hover over this edge and I start getting close to the center, this box pulls up. This means you are on the center of the, your shape. I'm going to click right here, drag straight down. Notice the line underneath my cursor. That's telling me I'm parallel with this line. Okay, come on down. Notice how it's telling me I'm still going to hit the center. That's great. Now that's a construction line. Go ahead and press escape or else it's going to tell you to, it's going to want you to keep drawing this construction line. So I press escape and now I'm free. All right, dimension from this line to right here. What did I say? 0.5. Oh, we're already almost there. So point, I can just type 0.5, press enter and this rectangle. Mmm, nice. Perfect. It's amazing. Okay. We're not quite done with this sketch just yet. Let's do this. Let's grab, actually, we're good for now. Let's extrude this down. But now we want to not, we don't want to add, we want to remove. See how I can take this rectangle and start just pushing it down? Now we're removing space. Let's remove point one of the depth of this shape and click the uh, green check mark and we're good to go. Awesome. Okay, now we have a little dado, a dado slot. Okay, we're going to make a dovetail now. And this dovetail, we're going to make right in the center of this rectangle. So now when I sketch, I'm going to sketch, I'm going to select this front, this front view, this front plane of this rectangle. So click the front. Okay. Now we're going to start by drawing a trapezoid. Draw the trapezoid from here. So to draw a trapezoid, just click, click, make this parallel, click, click, and drag it over. I need to close this shape. This last one is tricky because it kind of looks already like it's a trapezoid. Drag it over and click and make sure that this trapezoid is closed the whole way. It needs, it needs to be closed. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter how exactly it looks right now. If it doesn't look perfect, that's great. Totally fine. We're going to fix it. Because here with Dimension Tool, I can click this edge and then this edge. And now it's asking me, hey, what angle do you want this to be? Let's make this be 60 degrees. And let's do the exact same over here. 60 degrees. Awesome. That's that trapezoid is looking really trapezoid. Now, <laughs> okay, from right here to right here, remember this is 0.5 inches. Let's make, let's do the same 0.1 inches from here to here. We want to be 0.1. Enter. Boom. Money. Okay, guys, that'll be it for part one of this video. All I did to wrap this up was I just used dimension tool to define the length of this edge and I defined it to be 0.25. So go ahead and pause what you're doing or save your progress and go ahead and meet me back here for part two of this video.